In the past two videos, we have taken a look at a wide variety of tools that Krita offers to make art. This demonstration will show you how much you can really achieve with these and how they can be combined to create appealing 2D game assets. Before I started drawing this character, I modified one of the existing brushes to get a completely opaque tool, like Photoshop's default round brush. To create it, I selected the predefined pen-like tool and set the fade values to 1 in the brush tip category. Then I unchecked the enable pen settings in the opacity and flow windows. This kind of brush allows you to control the sharpness of your silhouettes really well. Regardless of the software we are using, the design process is more or less always the same. We first have to think about what we are going to create, and then look for reference images to guide us while painting. The character I've decided to create here is the hero of a game called Dungeon Master. He is a young and agile fighter, both pretty confident and mischievous. Based on his personality, I imagine the character with a round and expressive face, with long hair and thin, fabric-made clothing. He carries a short sword, which he sheaves behind his pants under a cape. Some marks on his face as well as a jewel embedded in his forehead indicate that he has magic abilities. Here are the references I chose. As you can see, I took some notes on them. I carefully looked at and explored some of those pictures before drawing. This kind of work allows us to enrich our mental library and our knowledge of different materials, shapes, etc. The next step is to sketch our asset. In order to have a very responsive feel while drawing, I deactivate the stabilizer at that point in Krita. We will have to ink our assets to clean it up later, so I prefer to deactivate the option, get slightly messy lines, and enjoy a really fluid drawing feel while sketching. Do not hesitate to use selections as well as the free transform tool on top of the brush and the eraser. Those tools allow you to quickly modify the proportions of your sprites or to move bits around. You can hold the V key down and click and drag to move your selection around. Finally, you can duplicate a selection using the Ctrl J key combination. Don't stop with the first sketch. A good designer will at least duplicate his drawing a few times to create a few variations. Making multiple sketches forces us to stimulate our imagination. Our first idea will likely be a bit cliché or simply very far from what we can achieve with some more work. Think about it. We always have to warm up before we can really stress our muscles. Well, it's kind of the same with our brain. Our imagination needs some time to warm up and express itself fully. The next step is not the funniest, but it's important nonetheless. Inking. Inking doesn't consist of simply going over the outline of our character. It is not only about cleaning up the drawing, it affects the direction that the final set will take. The thickness of our stroke can influence the personality of our character. Also, our sketches are often messy. Because of that, we have to choose where and how to draw our outlines exactly. Should we put our strokes towards the center of the shapes, thus make them thinner, or on the outside instead? Taking the right decisions requires a bit of thinking. You can trace the contours of your sprites all at once, on a single layer. That is how comic artists and mangakas tend to proceed. In order to keep an optimal control on my sprites, I generally trace each part on a separate layer. This approach allows me to animate the character later thanks to the cutout technique. My character also has to work without contours, thus the silhouette of each body part has to be precise as there won't be any strokes on top of it to hide the imperfections. Once I have drawn each shape in black, here's how I fill them. I check that the alpha lock mode is inactive and that the fill tool is set up to expand the fill. I also activate the option to only affect the selected layer. Then I pick each layer using the R key and click in the middle of the shape to fill it. Once I took care of all of the layers, I activate the alpha lock mode and I go back to each and every body part to fill it with the color I want. That way I can give each part a base color. Once we got past that repetitive step, we can move on to the best part of the job painting in itself. 
In order to establish my color palette, I use the hue shifting technique in combination with local colors, which we talked about in the tutorials dedicated to colors. Before we brush in the shadows, we are going to choose the direction of our direct light. In many 2D games, the convention is to have a light that comes from the top and a bit from the left. This invites the viewer's eyes to move from top to bottom and from left to right, thus to look at a character's face first, for example. You can represent the direction of the light on your canvas using an arrow, to avoid forgetting it. An explanation of light and shadows is beyond the scope of this tutorial. However, because we are using a direct light here, we can keep in mind that the shadows will always appear on the sides that are opposite to our light. When I make small characters for a game, as many 2D game artists, I mostly focus on this simple principle to work efficiently. I treat every part of my character like a unique volume and a simple volume. An arm is a sort of cylinder, the head a beveled cube, etc. Because I have drawn lots of those shapes in the past, I can paint shadows at a satisfying pace. In general, I start by blocking in shadows using a single shadow tone on each of my layers with the Preserve Alpha mode on. I then go back to each body part to add transition colors and improve the character's rendering until it's done. Creating a game asset from start to finish is a pretty straightforward process. It's almost always the same, actually. We start with a sketch, which we ink. We then block colors in, followed by shadows and lights, and we take the time to slowly refine everything until we are done. And that's it for today. Uh, please don't hesitate to like the video and to become a subscriber. This channel is kept alive by your support. Do you have questions, critics, suggestions? Tell me in the comments below or on social networks. I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and until next time.